This is Luke Radowski here with Jason Hammond, the twin brother of Jeremy Haddon, who's facing life uh, in jail without bail right now. Uh, Jason, a lot of people don't know about this case. Can you just give us the lowdown of exactly what's happening? Yeah. Um, so right now, Jeremy is facing four counts of computer hacking, conspiracy computer hacking, um, involved in releasing Stratford documents to uh, WikiLeaks. Um, so uh, yeah, I feel personally that he is he's a target of uh, a political prosecution and um, what right now is like what going on is that they're doing as much time as they possibly can for um, victim like accused computer hackers because well I personally feel that they really don't want this information to be known by the people and it's sort of an essential role in a free democracy is that that you know that uh, corporations and governments have like open transparency towards like you know their business um, so right now Jeremy is um, facing, yeah, like you said, 30 to 30 years to life um, for this alleged hack. Um, I feel that, that, you know, they need a fall guy for the whole thing and they wanted to set a precedent with this, so they're pushing forward really hard. This was a huge FBI sting operation with an informant. Uh, being very close to this case, can you tell us one of the most, uh, what is the most outrageous action that you've seen personally take place in this case? Well, a couple things. The denial of bail was uh, pretty shocking because, you know, the, ju the judge said things that he was, like, more dangerous than murderers and uh, that, you know, that his powers are so crazy good that that he could, like, hack at a, an internet cafe credit card numbers if he were allowed out in bail. So, you know, they're still up in there and making it difficult for his process to view the information, uh, his discovery. Also, um, sort of the, uh, there's, there seems there's a conflict of interest within the judge herself in the case because her husband's email, Judge Laura Press's husband email is sort of wrapped up in the Stratford leak. It's like, it's like within their company, he's a subscriber. He was one of the victims whose emails and passwords were released and this is the, hu this is the husband of the judge who's deciding on this case right now and we're about to await a decision if she's going to recuse herself. What do you think is going to happen? Um, you know, I assume she will because it's her, you know, judicial duty to, you know, even if there's a, the, the, you know, the visibility of like impartiality that it's her, it's her duty to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I kind of feel that. I, I, I hope she will. You know, I think she will. Can you tell us more about Jeremy, what kind of person he was, and uh, to personalize him a little bit more? Sure, yeah. Um, well, I haven't known Jeremy my whole life. I've seen him, you know, change and all this. But um, he was always, uh, you know, a firm believer in like the you know people's rights to information. He he made newsletters when he was young. He was involved in school groups, um, and the the later years of his life up until the rest, he was involved in like grassroots community you know activist groups. So he was he was fighting for like various causes like immigrant rights, um, gay rights. He was fighting for you know anti-war. He was been a longtime protester in Chicago and elsewhere. So I, f I feel it's another one of the reasons why that he, he's targeted for this is because he's like he has many political arrests already in his history. So they, they feel that it would be an easy easy like conviction because uh, the court would definitely possibly see that there was a motivation behind the hack. Um, yeah. Uh, was there any protesting related charges or mostly uh, in, the, in, in this history? Yeah. Past, yeah, he was arrested for protesting the Olympics, um, a couple of other various, he was arrested at a gay rights protest too, so um, yeah, there were, most of them were political. I'd Where say. can people find out more information and how can we get involved? If you want to be a volunteer for the Jeremy Hammond Defense Committee, we're, we have the website freehammond.com and freehammond.org, they're both run by the Jeremy Hand Defense Committee, which is myself and others. And you could donate there and you could find out more information about his case and you could volunteer to help in some way if you'd like. So yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Thanks to all the supporters, the Free Anonymous, you know, uh, Solidarity Network. People have done a lot of uh, solidarity work for Jeremy. I'm really appreciative of it. Yeah. They said that we were mentioned in these uh, leaks and that we should uh, take a look. What, what did the leaks entail? Like, what was uh, what was in there? In short, the leak. And to me, seeking to make trouble is a core journalistic virtue. I mean, ruffling the feathers of those in power, subverting them, undermining them, challenging orthodoxies, making trouble is what journalism is about. And I think you need to commit yourself.